Hey, we're gonna learn one more slab dish making technique. So you're gonna need a cushion or a couple of pieces of like foam, for example, like the egg crate foam that works on like beds is great. Uh, old couch cushion usually works as long as it's pretty squishy. Um, I just have a couple of pieces of foam layered up here. And then you're going to need uh, a couple of things to make your dish. So um, to do a round dish, we're gonna want a template. So something I'm gonna cut out using this as my template. And then we're gonna want something that uh, we can use to make the bottom of the plate. And that will be a little bit smaller than the template. And um, you can find anything around the house. I love a yogurt container. This works really well and it will make sense in a moment. Another example, you could do a square. And so I have this square to be my template and then I have this square, which is a little bit smaller to be the inside. And then I'm actually using this as a template because most people won't have access to these, but this is another one of those GR pottery forms. And I'll show you how you can use this to make the same type of slab plate. You're also going to need uh, some slabs that you've cut using your template. Um, I like these slabs to have set up just a little bit. So unlike with the hump and the slump mold, which will be like freshly rolled slabs, these I'm going to cut to the size I want and then I'm going to let them set up for like, you know, a half an hour. Obviously how dry they get is going to depend on where you are but basically not too long. You still want them to be completely plastic, um, but you want them to be able to support themselves once you do the technique. Okay, so I just rolled out the slab. For these, you'll wanna go between a quarter and an eighth of an inch. You can play with that thickness. If you go larger, you're gonna wanna go a bit thicker. And for uh, smaller, more dainty plates, you might want to get a little bit thinner, see what you can get away with. Okay, so I've done one side. Now I'm going to flip this gently and compress and smooth the other side of my slab I'm using my metal rib. A plastic or rubber rib also works really well for this. I'm going to use my template. I'm going to cut some of these shapes out. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside and let them stiffen up um, just a little bit for about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to show you one more way to prep your slab for the push method. Um, so instead of cutting out the larger template side, I'm going to use my inside piece and I'm going to um, freehand what is on the outside of it. And this is just to show you that you could really do almost anything with this technique. Um, I am going to make a piece of bread shape on the outside and so my dish will hopefully look like a piece of bread when I'm done. So I'm staying about a half of an inch away from the edge and I'm freehanding it. When I get up to where the like top of the loaf would come out, I'm going to come out a bit And there we have it. Now I'm gonna let this slab set up like the rest of them. And okay, so I've got these three pieces ready to go. I've got these four ready to go. So let's do the push method. A good way to know if your slab is hard enough is when you pick it up, if the edge kind of disintegrates in your fingers, um, it's too soft. If you can pick it up and the edge mostly stays sharp, then it's good to go for the push down process. I'm going to show you an example of that. So this edge is from when I picked it up to move it from where I cut it. And you can see my fingertips just made a million marks in that edge. And this 
is from picking it up later, you can see that edge stayed nice and sharp. I'm going to set my slab on the cushion. And then um, because I'm using this plastic container, and as we know, plastic wants to stick to clay, I'm going to use a little piece of my thin plastic. I'm going to gently rub it on my slab. I'm going to center this interior piece as best I can. And again, I could pull out my trusty dusty ruler if I wanted. I'm going like an inch from each side, a little less than an inch. Or I can just eyeball it. And then I'm going to just push down. And as you can see, when I remove the plastic, I have a little dish. Now I can gently clean up this edge so that it's the height I want. Obviously tall like that would be more of a bowl and then lower like this is a bit of a salad dish. Um, I would set this aside and let it stiffen up, but just to show you, that's what that looks like. Pretty quick process. My next one. You can play around with the pressure that you use. I'm going to use one of my square pieces, so I'm going to use my square pusher downer. Um, because it says corners, I want to be a bit gentle. I don't want them to pierce through the soft clay. Um, so I'm just going to push down and then lift up. And as you can see, got a cute little plate. This time I'm going to use my toast piece. Show that still this way. Okay, I'm going to center not quite centered, it's just what makes sense for this piece. I'm going to gently push down and fish my interior out. And look at that cute little bread plate. I'm going to show you one more method. As I mentioned in the hump mold series, I could hump the clay over this and use this as a hump mold, but I can also use it to do this push technique. And so I've used the outside of it as the template, and now I'm going to put this faceted side down, and I'm going to do the push. And there you go. Because I'm using a piece of wood, so this isn't as sticky for this, I don't need to use a piece of plastic, but you certainly can, and it can you know, make removing the pusher downer piece a little bit easier. It's up to you, but if you're using something that is non-porous and sticky, you definitely want to use a piece of plastic. If it's porous and won't stick like wood, then you don't have to, but either way. Boop. Okay, let's talk troubleshooting. If you start to see your sides come down on their own, then your slabs are a little too wet and you wanna wait a little longer for the next ones. Um, but all hope is not lost. We can simply give it a little boost on our own. If we need to, we can use a little bit of paper to hold our edges up. But if you've got your slab at the right dryness, which may take a little bit of trial and error, they will stay up on their own. You can absolutely look at them and make sure they kind of have a similar angle so that they fit together in their set. All right, once these are closer to leather hard, we can start to clean up these edges. And again, we can just sponge that slabby edge. That will be pretty crisp looking. We can also pinch it to make a more organic finish. And of course, we can start decorating. 